Hi guys, welcome back to my channel of Survivors Post Narcissist. Um, I don't really know how to start this um, video or talk because I really didn't think I'd ever um, put this up on YouTube. The only reason I probably can is because I'm keeping this channel anonymous. Um, it's about my the antidepressants that I'm on. And I went on them after my discard. Um, so, and I know everyone who's listening, you know, are going through a really bad breakup. You know, there's no such thing as a, a mutual, nice kind of separation breakup with a narcissist. They're, they're all really um, bad. And I'm not saying like mine was worse than anyone else's. All of ours were really bad. Um, and my decision I don't even know if it was a decision um, I really really had to almost go on antidepressants about I would say about six months after the discard um, I went to my doctor so I don't know if I needed antidepressants before um, and I'm, and sometimes I wonder if I, if I had gone on my antidepressants before things, everything would have been better or turned out differently. I don't know, but I do, I do think about that. So where I was at the time when I went on antidepressants and the antidepressant that I got put on is citalopram. And so I was in like a really bad place already because of the discard and it was starting to affect my depression was affecting every aspect of my life and you know I know that people go through divorces and breakups and I'm and I'm wondering you know like I I just couldn't um, I was kind of angry with myself because I couldn't deal with it very well it wasn't getting better and um I was just so upset. I think I probably cried for the first three months solid. And then I was just simply crying every day um, after my discard. And I think when I hit, I hit a really low point. Um, I was, I want to say it was about six months after, maybe, maybe less. So I was, I was losing a lot of weight. You know, my ex husband was, um, we were starting the divorce proceedings and filing paperwork and things like that. I knew he had a girlfriend and she had moved in with him and we're living in an apartment. And I was um, in our house and I was, I, we had a lot of animals, right? We had five cats, we had four dogs, we had a lot of chickens, we had tortoise and rabbits and we just had a lot going on and I was taking all of that on because he, he had just left he had discarded me and our entire life like everything was gone and I was trying to run all the businesses I was taking care of still the house and the yard and I was I I just really had too much on my plate like when he left me he just left absolutely everything a full life was just gone and he was gone and the only thing I saw of him was like what he posted online or what people had told me. So, you know, I was, I was not only crying from like the breakup, I was still trying to keep like all the trees. We have a lot of, I have a lot of trees in my yard that are worth thousands of dollars and I have to keep them alive and, and all the animals. And I was, but I'm like going into like this big depression and I was, I was losing a lot of weight. Um, my hair was falling out. I couldn't sleep um, more than about an hour at a time um, and I think you know I would I was you know trying to talk to people I was talking to counselors life coaches you know and you think you're supposed to go through you know the um, all the things that you're you know to improve yourself and to get through the workout or you know and work things out um, and I I want to say that I really did do a lot to try to get through it naturally and like I say I think I might have needed um, 
maybe I should have put been put on something much earlier. Um, because, you know, people always start out with, well, are you exercising enough? What's your diet like? And they give you these things. And, and I just kind of laugh at that because, you know, I work out a lot. I have been doing martial arts my whole life. I do a lot of boxing. I do a qigong, tai chi, you know, meditation. I do yoga. I've, you know, I haven't eaten meat in over 10 years. I'm, you know, I'm a vegetarian. Um, you know, I'm a hiker. I'm always in nature. You know, the first place I go when I feel sad is I go to Sedona. You know, I, and I, so I do, I think I live a very healthy life. And I think um, the reason I had always had that lifestyle is because I've always been so sensitive to everything that I really always have to work on centering myself. So I'm all, and I know I'm, I'm a, a very severe empath. You know, I feel things just way too much. And I, and I always wished I didn't. I always had wished I didn't, but I just feel everything. So someone who's already in that position, um, going through a breakup with a narcissist and taking on what I did was way too much for me. Like it was just way too much. Like I was, I wasn't going to make it. And the thing when I, and I, I remember it, the, the, the moment when I had to go and see a doctor was I found out that my ex was taking his new supply, his new girlfriend. Um, he took her to a trip uh, to San Francisco and they were, he was posting all the things that me and my ex had done, you know, like a few years earlier, we, me and my ex went to San Francisco, we went to the tea gardens, we went to some of the, you know, vegetarian restaurants that we like. And he had taken, he, like, he had taken her to the tea gardens in San Francisco and, and took pictures of the two of them standing together in the exact same spot, in the exact same spot as the pictures that I had of us. And then he took her, he rented a convertible and took her to Napa Valley and took her to our vineyard, our wine vineyard that we had gone to and walked through and were in love with. And, and it was my, it's my favorite wine vineyard in Napa. And he took her there and was taking pictures of her in the same spots that, that, you know, we had gone. It says it, and like he over the past couple months, like he was systematically reliving our entire marriage with her instantly and doing and taking pictures of everything that we had. Like I could flip, I could put photo albums side by side and get the same pictures out of it. And it was just way too devastating. Like I almost collapsed when I saw that he had taken her to that vineyard <laughs> in Napa. I'm I, like, I don't know how, like only a narcissist, maybe mine can come up with something like that. And it was that weekend that, um, I felt like I hit like a new low in, um, in our breakup. Like I, you know, he, he looked like he was so happy and it, you know, and you are, and you're trying to move on. And that same weekend, um, one of my cats, it was, well, it's not my cat. It was his cat. Um, she was just, uh, she was, she wasn't a nice cat. She always fought with all the other cats. And I had a cat that out of the five cats, I had one cat that was living outside for the past couple years cause she didn't get along with the other cat. So I had to keep her outside and this other cat, uh, she, she got sick and she started throwing up all over everything. She threw up all over my desk and, and destroyed my keyboard and I had to get it replaced. And and I just couldn't like, and I'm like, okay, you're going outside until you either feel better or I can deal with it because I couldn't. And then she ended up kind of being happy outside. And so I, I left her outside and she was outside for the last uh, couple months. But the same weekend that, um, I saw my ex going to, um, San Francisco, I found, um, that cat outside, um, dead, uh, something had gotten her. And it just kind of put me to a new low. Like my hair was falling out in chunks. 
I looked like I had aged like 10 years and I just couldn't stop crying. And, and it was at that point that I went on citalopram and I have been on that antidepressant. Like, I don't know. I didn't know anything about antidepressants at all. I just knew, I just knew I needed help. And you have to really get to a bad place before you just go to your family doctor and, and, and tell them what's really going on. So, and that's where I was at. So I knew I had problems before, but I thought my, I was just oversensitive kind of thing to life almost. And, and I know a lot of people in my, in my family are like that too. So she put, my doctor put me on citalopram and I didn't really, I didn't notice the difference right away. And I, I guess they do take time to, to work and build in your system and stuff. So, um, it did get better. I was able to stop crying, um, after, after a while. And I'm actually at this point quite scared to ever go off of them. And some like when you first go on and make that big decision to go on antidepressants, because it's not something, you know, you can take lightly because I know going off of them is very, very difficult and dangerous. And I, you know, you hear about people that are antidepressants and then they just stop taking them and then they you know the they get suicidal thoughts and things like that and you know and I and I was always kind of the person just to kind of like live a help happy good lifestyle um meditate do yoga eat right you know be close to your family and friends and you know everything will be fine but you know what happens when you're doing all of that and and you're not fine and you know when when you're really not fine like and you 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 and you make that decision you know and I don't even think it was a decision at that point I just knew I needed to go to my doctor because I really thought I was going to die (laughs) right of something I had lost um I had lost about 35 pounds uh in the matter of a few months um without without trying like I just couldn't um couldn't keep any weight on and and that was scary too um like all my clothes couldn't fit and people were starting to look at me my face was all sunk in so you know I was angry with myself for letting someone you know have this effect on me so but like we're talking two years later now um you know I don't I don't want to go off of them because it was so scary to be in that place when I first went on them. Like I will, I will just settle into taking citalopram for the rest of my life. If that means that I never have to revisit that place again, you know, and I don't, I honestly do not advocate antidepressants, you know, and I, and I feel kind of bad that I had such a like kind of a bad opinion about them. Um, always thinking that self work could overcome things if you do it properly, or, or if you're, you know, people take antidepressants if they're lazy, if they're not really trying to improve themselves. You know, like that. I feel kind of shameful that I had those opinions about antidepressants and the people that took them. So I can't. I can't say that I won't um, ever go off them, but I know. <laughs> not not in the foreseeable future um and you know because I had I did try to only take one like every other day one pill like every other day to see if I can wean myself off or see how it would affect me and it did not go good I I really just started crying again pretty pretty quickly so I I quickly got on my regimen again and I tried that twice and the same thing happened both times. So that was, that is just not an option right now. And I don't know when it will be. Um, I don't have any side effects actually. And a lot of people can get liver, liver problems. Um, the only, you know, sleep, you know, um, sexual, you know, problems and, and things like that. I honestly don't have any, um, any side effects besides the fact that I I just I don't cry as much (laughs) anymore um so 
because I don't have many side effects, I can't really see myself. That's, that's again why I can't really see myself um, getting off of them. And when I talked to, I talked to a few family members um, about, and I finally told, because I never told a lot of my family that I went on them. I was almost embarrassed. And when I did, like when I was talking with some family members about you know, my, my breakup and my divorce and how sometimes I'm really not doing good. You know, they kind of said, they, they suggested it, you know, and I'm like, well, I've been on citalopram for two years. So <laughs> they're like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So, and after I told some family members, they told me that, you know, it's, they said that it runs in the family depression. I'm like, what? And it's just something that, people don't talk about really um you know you don't you don't tell all your cousins and 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 things like that that oh yeah I'm on antidepressants and then I had another family member who's close with a like a large side of my family um that I don't ever talk to she goes she goes yeah I bet you 90 percent of them are all on antidepressants and I was just floored I'm like what you know I didn't know this so because you know when you tell you know your family history medical history to your doctor I've never had to say that because I I never knew because people don't tell people others about it it's private you know like because you don't I I don't really want people to look at me like that saying oh what's wrong with her she has to be on antidepressants you know but what I do know is that sorry it's now um I know that I I shouldn't have had all those opinions that I that I did because I I was never in the position to you know it's easy to tell tell someone else that oh well what's your diet like do you exercise like um it's easy to tell and look at people and have opinions if they're on antidepressants if if you've never been in that situation and I thought I can get through this talk without crying (laughs) so I'm definitely not one of those people that have um I know some people go like feel nothing even on antidepressants so I I still have all my feelings they're just not as well they're not as deep so that's the why I probably can't ever go off of them but you know I I know that I really put in a really solid effort before and I white knuckled it for a long time so I don't obviously my opinion has changed for you know people that go on antidepressants I'm like well if you've never been in their shoes you're you're no one to to tell them that um, that you should have just tried harder and worked on yourself more and you wouldn't have had to go on antidepressants so anyway sorry I'll try to straighten myself out a little bit but um, so I I never even thought I'd ever well I guess I can I'm doing it kind of cowardly because I keep this channel um, anonymous but if you're out there and you're really having more than a normal breakup, even more than a normal, I would say, breakup with a narcissist, and if things are really bad, you know, um, and when your 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 life is um, not going to be okay, like I I really like I really felt like my my body was deteriorating so badly, you know, trees and animals were dying around me, my my career, my house, everything was in jeopardy because I couldn't stop crying. And I couldn't leave the house and um I I think my my body was getting so weak and I was really in trouble. So, you know, if you're out there, I mean, this is a very personal individual decision to to um have to make this move because sometimes once you you know cross that line you know you feel like there's just um it's really hard to go back and me and i and i'm i might never go back to 
the days where I didn't have to take a pill every day. You know, I, I know, but the thing is I've accepted that. And if it means I never have to go back to the weeks before um, I started citalopram, that, that's, that's totally fine with me. And if anyone has something to say about it, like, well, <laughs> they don't know, right? Just like if you've been discarded by a narcissist, you know, we were together for seven years and after that discard and just watching, it wasn't even just me being alone. It was me having to go through systematically every good memory of my entire marriage got destroyed along with it. So it's like, it would have been better for, you know, never to have those good memories in the first place because they got destroyed afterwards. It was, you know, so, you know, you try to tell people this is not a normal breakup that I'm going through, you know, it's not a normal divorce. It's not like, and not to say everyone else's is bad, but the only people that can understand a breakup like this is if they were with a narcissist. The same people, it's like, if, you're, if you've never had to take antidepressants because you don't know what it's like to have to take them, right? So, and I'm, I'm putting this uh, talk online because I'm not the only one who goes through this. I know I'm not. But there's not a lot of people that admit it, admit it or put it online. So that's what kind of these talks are about. So thank you everyone for listening to me. This was a hard talk, but I'm glad I did it. Um, please leave me your comments and be sure to like and subscribe because we are all survivors post-narcissist. <laughs>